I think one of the most enjoyable things was actually meeting other people who were not necessarily doing exactly the same thing as me, not necessarily fine artists because there were a lot of curators and other people in, in, to do with the arts but not actually practitioners necessarily. I think that was very interesting seeing their point of views and how you know, talking to them about what they felt was important. There's that community, sense of community so you're not out there alone. These events are trying to be all inclusive, and I think that's what's great is that you, you, you get the whole spectrum of the kind of the individual artist and the guys running some of the bigger institutions coming together. I think it's really, really important that we keep talking to each other, we talk as much as we can, as often as we can, to as many people as possible because uh, being an artist and a curator in a rural area can be very isolating maybe kind of parking some kind of ideas and actually thinking about what we really need in the region as opposed to something we can buy or bring in. Having a strategic overview and ensuring that everyone's voice is heard, I think it's important in a sort of regional networking organisation that, it, that it's not just about one or two voices being heard. I mean, as I'm still sort of starting out, you sort of want to make these friends and networks and associations but you're still sort of feeling a bit of a newbie and you're, you're not entirely certain and these sort of events because they're much more relaxed and informal and everyone's sort of exploring what's going on it's very interesting stuff. The purpose of Visual Arts Southwest is to raise the level of critical engagement with the visual arts in the Southwest and to support a sustainable visual arts sector. The uh, steering group was formed. It was made up democratically from an open call. So within that steering group we have a third made up from Arts Council national portfolio organisations, a third made up of representatives from independent organisations and a third made up of artists, practitioners from the region. I'm Tom Trevor, I'm chair of Visual Arts South West. We had four particular focuses within the programme. So we were looking at collaboration, how we would share that work out, audiences, thinking about engagement, criticality, how we raise the level of debate and also bring profile to the, the excellent work that's already happening, and also, of course, economy. And that's become even more important because how we sustain our our practices and uh, our organisations in the new climate is becoming more and more critical. And I think the future really is about network culture and how that's going to become the, the, the real um, means of, of uh, creating a sustainable economy for the visual arts. Through our collaboration programme we've worked with Alias on a series of artist hubs which have been opportunities for meeting and networking amongst artists across the region. The Alias Hub, um, I was invited to come and talk um, about OSR Projects, which is um, a transitional artist group that we set up um, last year um, as part of opening this space up. Um, and the idea of the group is that it's an informal network of artists and curators that um, show work here and do project-based work from this space. We're never going to be a commercial gallery space and I'm not interested in that um, f for this particular place. We're not going to sell work out of this um, location. Um, but we can make really interesting work, um, but also we can make it outside of the context of the building. We're working with um, the New Expressions programme to help bridge the gap uh, between the museum sector and the visual arts sector. So what we intend to do as part of their programme is to organise a day where artists can get to meet people from museums and they can talk about practical concerns that they both have and ways forward. We have a, a very large region um, from Forest of Dean to the Isles of Scilly so working across that can be a real challenge. So working together as a network really makes sense um, because together we can be a much stronger voice.
We've worked with Audience Southwest on an audience benchmarking project and we're working with Engage, looking at socially engaged practice. Engage has been working in gallery education and participation for a number of years and one of the results of the research that we found was that there's a gap in provision for artist development around social engagement but also in an understanding that, audien that organisations have in working with audiences in a participatory way. Obviously the benefits of working with Visual Arts Southwest for us is is that potential for bringing in all of the creative arts practitioners. So things like the arts map that's been developed has helped us pinpoint areas for targeting for this kind of program. One of the events that has added into this program has been with SpaceX Gallery in Exeter. They're working on a program called Collective Praxis, which is about exploring different elements of socially engaged practice and participatory practice. So they've invited selected audiences of artists, arts professionals, to, to have a conversation around those processes and practices. And our project has been involved in that by supporting some of the artists with bursaries to be able to attend, but also, again, in helping us to disseminate what we're doing and also engage artists in the programme itself. I've just come back from the Liverpool Biennial and I think something like that in the South West would be fantastic. I think we need to raise our game, yes. Um, I, think, I think that would be really great to do something that really attracts and makes, makes um, artists feel that they're valued in the South West. I think there's and attracts international artists of international calibre. You need something which is sustainable, which has a legacy, which builds relationships with people. It's about that. It's interesting in the southwest. It's a really uh, beautiful and particular place, real distinctiveness. But the, the kind of perception is that it's quite a sleepy place and it's not necessarily where you discover critical art practice of an international scale. So I think it's really important for, for all of us living here and for visitors to know that this is a place where international standard work is produced and is exhibited. Visual Arts Southwest wanted Curatorial Network to develop um, its criticality strand of its programme. Now, over the next 12 months, what we intend to do is to develop a a program mainly for emerging and young curators um, and support their practice by providing a kind of bursary, a grant fund really, to develop their ideas. Also mentoring support and support also for writing practice as well. I've really benefited from uh, some of the activities, particularly uh, of some funding from a curatorial bursary, um, which really helped progress my practice as an artist, but also uh, my involvement with Motorcade Flash Parade. I was able to use the bursary to curate a show called Bread and Roses, which was really um, a kind of curatorial exploration of my work as an artist. Um, so any kind of opportunities like that that benefit artists and small-scale arts organisations is fantastic. I think it's just wonderful that um, uh, the organisation runs informative uh, conferences and seminars and events that uh, can it, uh, help people to learn more about what they're doing and more about what they can do and more about what they should be doing. Um, so more, more of the same. Well part of the uh, new Visual Arts Southwest programme is, uh, is the development of uh, critical writing and for this we've partnered the Arvon Foundation uh, the Arvon Foundation has been running since the 60s. Its great appeal, I think, is not only the quality of the tutors, but the fact that as a residential uh, venue, it gives the opportunity for people who are on that course to meet up, to talk after the workshops have been completed, to eat together. The, there's a lot of uh, academic writing about the visual arts in the Southwest. The, you know, the universities are are producing a, a lot of that kind of work but what's um, often seen as lacking in the southwest is writing for the more general reader 
Well, I think it's relatively early days for uh, Visual Arts Southwest, and I think the its effect can only be judged uh, in a few years' time, and the, its success will depend on whether it can build a self-sustaining network. We live in a country where the commercial art world is particularly centred in London. It's a very metropolitan, non-dispersed model, which is different, uh, say, in Germany or in Belgium, for example, where there are com really sort of viable and internationally networked commercial art centres in various different cities. Um, in those countries, in the UK, it's very, very London-centric. Um, so there are very few commercial galleries like Works Projects outside of London. It's very, very hard when you're living in the South West to begin to make those contacts and to become a professional artist actually existing you know, off, your, you know, off your own work. You do need to be represented by a gallery. And so what we tried to think about was a way that Works Projects could work with some of our partners uh, with Visual Arts Southwest to put together a programme which is called Regional Interference uh, to go out and find interesting, unrepresented artists based in the Southwest, work with them for a defined period to give them the support of the gallery, um, to give them some professional development and to give them exhibiting platforms and also exposure at an art fair. Reveal Somerset um, is a partnership between all the kind of visual arts or many of the visual arts players in Somerset. It includes the Brew House, it includes Somerset Artworks, it includes Somerset Film, um, and we basically um, support one another, collaborate to um, engage people in the visual arts across the county. We got some um, development money from Turning Point, which became Visual Arts Southwest. Um, and we brought the partners together with a consultant, uh, Anne Jones, to really sort of help us look at where the partnership was going and, and how it developed. The creative economy in Somerset is quite is a difficult area, but there's lots of small initiatives going on um, that are helping to develop that economy. The Visual Arts Southwest is part of the National Contemporary Visual Arts Network and um, it feeds into that sort of national network of regional groups. I think that we have benefited very much from the strong uh, community of organisations and individuals in the South West. It's a very vibrant community, a very committed membership, and we've uh, learnt a huge amount from them in terms of how you've developed as a network yourselves, how you've taken ownership of your projects, how you're rolling out national projects like the Quality of Experience, work with Annabelle Jackson, which is fantastic, and that kind of procedure happens the same from other regions. So another region who may have similar or, or, or different projects that are of national benefit, there's the opportunity for regions to pilot and test things at a regional level. And if it's of national significance, the opportunity to share that learning and investment across the network. I guess the, the next challenge is how we really produce some high profile events and also some tools for the network. So we're about to launch the website. I hope people are going to really use the website, not just to look up what's on where or is their show listed, but really use it in terms of feeding in ideas, providing information for others, you know, areas that might be of interest, sharing experiences, sharing information, using it for creating a real dialogue with others, not simply taking information out of it, but feeding information in. That's going to be really important if it's going to work. The, the latest phase, the new phase that we're moving into, is really how we um, become independent of the Arts Council and, and really kind of drill down to what is network culture because in the end we're all going to have to work together to make this happen. We have a political climate which isn't valuing the arts very highly. So it's time for people to be proactive. I firmly believe in the power of collective action and that's really what the network is. It's giving a voice to visual arts activity, it's showing the importance of activity and it's making people feel that they are still part of something much wider 
and, and vibrancy and still having some innovation that's there. So it's not doom and gloom for people, they're still being able to move forward you know, actively. Mm -hmm.